So it's 2022 January and there's a new beta release of Elemental Pro. Now this is a beta version, so all of these features are going to be experimental. So please do not install this on a live website. You're only opening yourself up to a whole world of pain if and when things go wrong. So if you want to test it, test it on a test site somewhere you don't care about, just so you can get a feel for it. Okay, so I haven't really taken a look at this. I quickly flicked through some of the options inside you to see what's included. Big focus on WooCommerce. Now, that's a good thing. There are still lots of areas in WooCommerce that we need to see improved upon when it comes to Elemental. And there is another feature which is to do with page transitions, which personally I have no real interest in. So first of all, let's take a quick look at the GitHub page and go through some of the things. And then I'm gonna take you step by step through each of the different features that I think are important, see exactly how they work. If we have problems, you kind of get an idea where I'm coming from. Okay, so this is the GitHub page. And as you can see, it gives you an overview of what's included. So first of all, your page transitions. We've got a, a new widget, which is the purchase summary. We've got some notices for WooCommerce and we've got some new layout options for the add to cart widget. I always like to see new features when it comes to WooCommerce, especially when they're baked directly inside Elemental Pro for the templating features. It removes that requirement for having a third party plugin. There's still lots to do. You know, if you saw my previous video, we took a look at the cart page, the checkout page and so on. I was really, really underwhelmed with what was included in that update. Hopefully they will address that sooner rather than later. But as with most things, when it comes to Elemental, we have no idea how long this road is going to be before we see those changes. Okay, page transitions. You can find out more information about that in the GitHub linked in the description below. I'm not interested in this, but if you want to check it out, you just need to enable it inside the experimental features. I'm more interested in these WooCommerce features. So first of all, we've got this purchase summary widget. So let's go ahead and see how we create it, what options we have, and then see if everything works the way it should do. So I'm gonna follow through what it basically says on here. So let's hop over into our dashboard. First thing we're gonna do is create a new page. We're gonna give this a name of purchase summary, just so we know exactly what it is. And we'll save that as a draft for now, and we'll edit this with Elementor. Okay, so let's go ahead and search for that purchase summary widget so we can take a look. And there we go, there's our widget. So let's just drag that into our design. And one of the things that's really annoying with this beta version, and I don't know if this is something that's gonna be replaced or updated, is that whenever you insert something, it does it twice. As you can see, we've got a section, column, purchase summary, section, column, purchase summary. So in, inserting a widget doubles it up every single time. And it's really, really annoying. So let's just delete that second one. And it also opens up the navigator on the right hand side every single time. So let's get short of that. Okay, so this is the purchase summary widget. We've got some options inside here. Again, nice to see it actually links up to our dynamic tags option. So you can customize a lot of these options inside here. So if you wanted to have a centralized sort of page that you can allow your users to customize the different values they want inside here and then reference the template files and the page files you create using these dynamic tags. That's pretty cool, I like that. You've got a full complement then of options for alignment across the different kinds of devices. Come to our payment details. Again, same kind of thing inside here. We can customize any of the titles, any of this information inside there, bank details, download information, purchase summary, billing, shipping, and preview settings. So all the things you need if you want to customize this are inside there. Hopping into the styles, you can see we've got full control. Now this is one of those areas that this kind of gets a little bit slow and kind of annoying when you want to make changes because there are so many typography settings unless they've changed that. As you can see, typography, payment details, typography. So almost every section inside you has typography options. So to make changes to all of this, you can spend quite some time going through just setting those up. Little bit frustrating. It'd be nice to have a global typography, you know, headings, content, those kinds of things. So that's basically how we create this purchase summary. How much use this is going to be to you, I suppose it's going to be on a use by use basis. If we publish this, apparently we're supposed to have a summary pop up and you can see there it is. Do you want to use this as your basic, your default purchase summary page to override the WooCommerce options? We'll hit save on there, we do. And now we've updated our summary page. Okay, so let's give it a try. I've hopped over to a product on my site and let's go ahead and purchase this. So once I fill my details out, let's place my order. And there we go, that then takes us to our purchase summary. So we can now see exactly what we purchased, our billing details, all those kinds of pieces of information, fully customized if we want to customize it using this new particular widget. 
that's basically it. Let me know in the comment section if you think this is something that's useful to you, if you find uh, that this could be something that could be, you know, something you've been looking for for a while. For me, I'm kind of curious as to how much use this would actually be. So next on the list, we've got the ability now to go ahead and customize the notices throughout your WooCommerce store. Another way of allowing you to customize the look and feel to make sure that everything is consistent throughout your entire design. To access those does take a little bit of digging around if you don't know where to go. So what you need to do is come in and choose site settings. Inside there, we're gonna to go to the WooCommerce options. And you can see this is where we've got the WooCommerce pages and we've also got the notices. So if you find you want to change this summary page or your basket or your checkout or any of those kinds of things, you can see you can change those values inside your little bit hidden away. And if you look at the notice information, when you take a look at the GitHub, it just references, go to element or site settings. It's not really that obvious where to find those site settings. So it took me a couple of minutes of searching around, doing a little bit of search on Google to find out where the hell that actually was. So come on, make these a little bit more obvious or in your notices where you're sort of saying to do something, just put in brackets how you bloody do it because it's not immediately obvious where these settings actually are. But there you go, there's your site settings. So like I say, if you wanna change any of these key default pages for your store when you customize them, it's all inside you. If we go to the notices this time, you can see we can now go in and we can customize how the notices look. So if we click, you can see we currently have three different notices, your error, message, and info notifications. So let's just say we'll do something like message. You can see that now in traditional elemental fashion, we'll open up and display a new tab that allows us then to go through and customize the look and feel of that particular notification. And as you can see nicely, it does pop up and show you exactly what that's going to look like. So any changes we make now will be reflected and we can see them on the screen in front of us. So that is kudos for that. I really do like that option. But you can see we want to change the text color, the typography, so we can change this. We'll set this to be something like the accent. You can see it immediately changes. Change the color on there. Let's change it for this. You can see we've got an icon. If we want to change the color of the icon, we could change that. And as you can see, it's immediately reflected as we make those changes. Same for the notice box, the background color, those kinds of things. So we can just say, let's just change that. We could change it for an image if you want to, change it for color. So you can set it for blue. All those controls are inside there. So let's just make that a little lighter and for control of the buttons and everything else. And then you can simply come back into your notices section and you can repeat the same process now for the info. And you see that now gives us an info one. And if we want the third and final one, we can do the error notices and that's inside there as well. Really easy to do, really easy to set up. And once you finish, you hit update and that should then be reflected globally throughout your site wherever any of those notices are going to be displayed. So that is really nice, really simple. And I like the way that's integrated into the page that you're using to edit that actual notice information. Pretty cool. Now, one other area, when you've created and styled your notices the way that you want, you now have control over the positioning of those if you're using Elementor-based checkout pages and so on. Now, there's a strange quirk that I've got working with the checkout page. As you can probably see on screen at the moment, we get this kind of weird single column, even though if I change it to two columns, it just makes the columns smaller. There's some kind of weird glitch I'm getting on this. So ignore that, that's not the important thing here. So let's just set that back to one column so at least we can see it. But what we can do is we can go back to our widgets and we can just do a search for notice and you can see we get WooCommerce notices. So now we can just drop those into our design, remove the annoying duplicate that we kind of get. And now we've got full control over the positioning of those notices. So if you want them at the top, the bottom, left-hand side, right-hand side, in this very specific location in your designs, now you have access to that as a normal widget inside Elementor Pro. So again, cool to see that. There's a little bit of round tripping. Obviously, if you want to go and change things, you've got to go back into your settings, which is your site setting section. And inside there, you can come back into your WooCommerce, into your error notices and so on. And you can style and configure those as you see fit inside your design. So cool to see we've got, again, more control over how everything looks inside our shopping experience with WooCommerce. Okay, so the final thing to do with WooCommerce, which unfortunately I can't actually demonstrate, is there's some new options for the Add to Cart widget. And this is great if you're using third-party plugins for things like additional payment options like Apple Pay, or you may be using things like color pickers and so on. You can now control the position of the button in relation to other items. So this is a kind of representation of what you'll see. And to access those settings, you simply need to have a template we're gonna use the add to cart button. And you can see now we've got three different layout options. We can choose between inline, stacked, and auto. Like I say, at the moment, unfortunately, they don't really show anything. 
But when you have additional payment methods, like I say, if you have the Apple Pay icon next to it, you no longer have to rely upon CSS, custom CSS, custom code in this to get it to do it. You can now use it directly inside the widget settings itself. So that's pretty cool to see that we have that. So that's basically all of the key features in this 3.60 beta release. Is this something that I think is worthy of a major, as in 3.6 release? Not really. There's some useful features inside here, but are they important features that warrant a major release? No. I think we still need to have more important updates, things like the checkout page, the cart page, and the account page need to be given more control. Credit where it's due for some of these features, they are implemented very nicely, but they're not overly important, I think, for a big portion of people that customize their WooCommerce stores with Elemental. However, that's just my opinion on it. Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this, and as always, all the links you need are in that description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.